Hello everyone, my name is Halvi. In this video, we are going to see if it's possible to beat Fire Emblem the Blazing Blade using only Elliewood and Hector. Now this is going to be a Hector hard mode playthrough. And as for the tactician, I do want to make my affinity the same as Hector's. I don't think it will matter much, but I might as well do it anyway. And as for the rules of the run, basically Hector and Elliewood will be the only ones damaging and defeating enemies to beat each map. And they will be the only ones I deploy on each map, except for units that are force deployed a few times like Lin. Hector can solo chapter 11 without too many issues. It's definitely designed for him to do most of the work. Although my first attempt at this chapter had a bad ending, Hector missed a 92% kill shot on the boss and then got killed on enemy phase. So starting out on the next attempt, what I like to do is destroy this wall and take out the archer and soldier. And while that goes on, that enemy thief will go around opening doors and that chest. I'm not even gonna try to get the red gem Hector has a very slim chance of killing the thief and I need to get Hector on a pillar to safely take out the other enemies coming towards him. And while Hector does that, I will briefly go over him as a unit. So Hector is a tank. He specializes in HP, strength, and defense. I like to think of him as an axe armor, but with five move. He also has the potential to be a powerful combat unit. His speed growth is only 35%, but if he does get a few speed level ups, he'll be doubling a lot of enemies, mainly Lance users like soldiers, armor knights, and steel lance pegasus knights. And the early game in Hector mode is loaded with lance enemies. His 13 con also means that he doesn't get slowed down by hand axes and most other commonly used axes. I like Hector a lot. The only problem with him is his very late promotion. Okay, let's see where Hector's at. Oh, he's about to fight the boss and look at that. He can one round him this time. He got some good level ups during this map. I have a good feeling about this run. Now on to chapter 12. This is the chapter that Ellie Elliewood joins. He starts off pretty weak though compared to where Hector is at right now. As a unit, Elliewood is very balanced. He doesn't really specialize in any particular stat and as a sword unit he is pretty much locked to one range until he promotes. I like Elliewood. I think he has potential. I know he has a lot of haters out there but I think he'll turn out pretty well. So this chapter was a little sloppy. I put Hector in a forest tile and then a mountain and just let him try to intercept a lot of the enemies around him. I rescued Sarah with Oswin and tried to keep him and Matthew away from enemy ranges. I put Elliewood on a mountain so he would survive against any enemies that went after him. I used Marcus and Lowen to rescue Dorcas and Bartra and tried to keep them and Rebecca away from enemies. Eventually a couple enemies do get past Hector and start attacking Matthew and Oswin. Matthew is the first to die. Also the boss is drawing in near Hector but as long as Hector remains in the mountain tile the boss isn't too much of a threat. Hector even gets a crit against the boss to finish him off and then gets a good level up afterwards. Rebecca then is the next unit to die, and now I think it's time to move Hector down to try and meet up with Elliewood. Oswin will continue to get attacked by a mercenary and a brigand since he can't really outrun them with only four move. Elliewood and Hector have a chat and that must have brought some good luck because Elliewood gets his first level up and he made it a good one. We'll go ahead and kill this Pegasus Knight and I get the secret book from the village. Now I don't have any money and Hector really needs some axes so I have no choice but to sell the secret book for 4,000 gold. Then I've been working on Elliewood and Hector's support while moving them around and I can get them to C rank right away. With only two enemies left, I will go ahead and buy some weapons and give both kills to Elliewood to end the map. In the beginning of chapter 13 here, my main concern is baiting the Pegasus Knights in with Hector and then I want to kill them right away. I just don't want them getting past Elliewood and Hector and attacking Marcus, Loa, and Dorcas or Bartra. And oh no, the mine village got destroyed. That is a problem, not because I wanted the mine, but because it opens up a shortcut for enemies to go through and it'll make it harder to deal with them. And I can't quite get Marcus out of enemy ranges, but they go for Elliewood anyway. Okay, that's fine. Let's try to clean up this archer and bring and oh boy, here comes Guy. He is pretty scary with his killing edge. I'm gonna have to try to get into a more defensive position. Okay, there are a lot of enemies coming in now. Elliewood getting the mountains. Hector's been getting so much defense, I don't have to worry about him. And hopefully the enemies don't want to go after Marcus and Lowen. They really don't have anywhere to run to. Hector is really good here, one rounding archers. Guy can't do anything to him, but a Pegasus Knight has broken behind the lines and is in range of Marcus and Lowen. I really don't like that, but there's not much I can do. Guy's gonna start going after Elliewood now. It's okay though, just as long as he doesn't crit me. It's a 20% chance. Okay, I 
probably shouldn't have attacked Gi there. I didn't think about him going into heal mode, but it does give me a little chance to breathe and Lowen's getting pretty low. Maybe I can get him out of there. Okay, I really need to kill this Pegasus and I think I can do it. I'll have to move Elliewood off the mountain, but he'll be fine with only Axe users around. Oh, I opened up Lowen to be attacked, but he dodges. He's trying his best to stay alive. Gi really wants to be at full health, but that's okay. It gives me time to take out one of the brigands. Now Gi's coming in again and I need Elliewood on the mountain. And oh, I messed up a little there, leaving Lowen in range of the brigand, but he dodges yet again. He really doesn't want to die. Elliewood, please finish off Gi and Hector kill the brigand. Okay, I can now for sure say that Marcus and Lowen are completely out of danger, and Hector and Elliewood can safely take out the remaining enemies on the way to the boss, and they should also be coming close to getting their B support. Also, I didn't mention it when it happened, but that other village got destroyed, so I won't be going to 13x. I miss out on early Merlinus and 5,000 gold by not going, but it's okay because I didn't have high faith that Ellie Wood and Hector could have beaten that chapter with getting the 5,000 gold anyway. To finish off this map, I do some shopping and give the boss kill to Ellie Wood. It's pretty early into the run, but all things considered, I think things are going well so far. Now in chapter 14, we finally have battle prep so I can undeploy the other units that have survived so far. This is a pretty simple route map. This map also has the annoying rain mechanic that lowers the movement of all units. However, this time it didn't really bother me at all because by the time the rain came in, Hector and Elliewood were already in position and I didn't need to move them at all. So starting out, I want to let Elliewood kill as many of these nearby enemies as possible, but I do have to be careful since they are all lance users. Urk will attract a lot of enemies and he dies pretty quick. I'm not worried about him. I'm also not worried about the villages. I'll just let them be destroyed. I don't think any of the enemies in this chapter could even hurt Hector, not even a little. So the main strategy for this map is to set up Hector in a choke point with Elliewood right beside him. They will get their support up to A rank and at A rank they will each get plus one attack, plus three defense, plus 15 avoid, plus seven crits, and plus 15 critical avoid. So a very defensive support which is good. I like it. It's funny though because if you remember in my Roy and Lelina solo run of FE6, their support was very attack focused. So while Hector is in the choke point, Elliewood will get experience from a bunch of Pegasus Knights and some pirates as well that can get around Hector. Then Hector will take out a whole lot of enemies, including the boss. Then I can bring Elliewood up into the choke point so he can get more kills. Then all is left is to clean up a few remaining enemies. I also do some shopping and I'm almost out of money. Also, Hector capped his defense during this chapter, which is incredible. Chapter 15 is a pretty easy survive chapter. The bad thing about it was that I was unable to get the dragon shield from the boss or get the silver axe from that one chest. I didn't even get a chance to pull the boss from his starting position. I had to keep one of the lords on the throne at all times and I figured Elliewood would be best for that since he could use the extra defense and avoid from it and it also gives passive healing. Then the only threat to Hector were the two mages because as we all know Hector is not confident against mages and their ilk. I also wanted to keep both of them in support range so that they can make use of the bonuses to help clear out as many enemies as possible but it still ended up getting pretty clogged up with enemies in the throne room. We all know that meme of Hector sitting on the throne in this chapter surrounded by enemies saying like I give a shit but this time it's Elliewood sitting on a throne saying like I give a shit. Hector and Elliewood are really starting to get barely any experience from getting kills but Elliewood still got one good level up during this chapter and yes Hector we survived. The struggle in chapter 16 was trying to get Lynn to safety so that she doesn't die and cause a game over. She's not going to be part of this run aside from the chapter she is forced deployed on and I'll have to figure out ways to keep her alive in those maps so I use will as my first sacrifice to draw the mercenaries away from Kent and Sane while one of them is rescuing Lynn. The goal is to get Lynn close enough to be rescued by Florina and the two of them can hang out over the water in the southwest corner of the map. They'll be safe there as long as I don't let any Pegasus Knights get close to them. Elliewood and Hector are slowly getting stronger and stronger and for the most part they don't have any problems with any of the enemies on this map. Luckily the Thief and the Brigands all prefer to attack player units over destroying the villages in this map. I can use that to my advantage to draw their attention and save both villages. One has a red gem which I really want and the other has a horse slayer which I can just sell. I also just used Lynn to sell her blue gem right off the bat so I don't have to worry about that later. The map really slows down once the cavalier reinforcements start piling in because half of them have javelins and just attack Elliewood so he can't counter them. I end up having to take them all out before making more progress towards the boss. After they are taken care of I get the villages and sell their items and then buy some weapons 
weapons, then I take out the rest of the enemies as I make my way to the boss, and then give the boss kill to Hector. There were some good level ups in this map for Elliewood, but Hector's were not so great. Next is chapter 17. This map wasn't really too hard. The enemies are pretty weak, but there are a lot of archers and nomads that really slow things down since Elliewood can't counter at two range, and Hector with a hand axe has shaky hit rates and can't one round most of them. I also don't really have a chance of getting any of the treasures on this map, so I just slowly worked my way up the map. I was a little worried about Raven, but he wasn't too bad to take down. I was too slow to save any of the green units, so I missed out on 17x and some other items that you get from saving them. Although 17x would have probably been a waste of resources anyway, but there are some pretty good items I could have gotten, like I know there's a Lance Reaver in one of the villages, and Kanos has a secret book, but I'm trying not to reset maps unless I have to, like getting a game over. The reinforcements slow me down a little bit, but Elliewood and Hector push their way through all the way to take out the boss and seize the throne to end the map. Elliewood and Hector both hit level 20 in this map, and boy, it's a long way until either of them can promote, especially Hector. I am a little worried about their stats. I'm not sure how far they'll be able to make it with these stats. The only way to increase their stats now until they promote is with stat boosters, and I don't think I'm guaranteed very many of them from now until promotion. Hector is one point below average for HP, minus four strength, plus two skill, minus one speed, minus three luck, plus three defense, and average resistance. I'm grateful that he capped defense, but he didn't get much anywhere else. Elliewood has plus one HP, average strength, minus one skill, average speed, plus one luck, average defense, and plus two resistance. So slightly better than average overall, but he's not really excelling anywhere either. Chapter 18 is another pretty easy survive map. There really isn't anything for me to go after here. I do deploy Merlinus here so that I can stock up on weapons. I will only be deploying Merlinus if I need to buy a lot of weapons since if he's not deployed, then you can't send weapons or items to him that you buy. So I do my shopping on the first turn. I get lots of hand axes and they don't have iron axes. So I have to settle for some steel axes. I get iron and steel swords and then the armory and vendor are my only defensive terrain on this map. So I just keep Elliewood and Hector on them for the entire map. At first, I think that maybe I should fight and defeat enemies, even though I'm not getting any more experience. Then about halfway through the map, I realize I'm really just wasting resources. So I trade their weapons around so that they don't fight back anymore. And then they just get surrounded. And luckily the enemies that are in attacking range can't really do much to Elliewood and Hector. And they have pretty high chances of surviving. Of course, we can recreate the meme from chapter 15. And this time it's both Elliewood and Hector saying like we give a shit. And then it's just a matter of time before Fargus and his crew get up here and help take out the rest of the enemies. In chapter 19, there are no items or anything to go after once again, so I just try to get to Uhai as fast as possible to kill him and end the map. I go ahead and trade Dart's weapons over to Hector just because I might as well take the free weapons. Then I just send Dart off to be killed. Fiora comes in on this map and survives for a turn or two before she also gets killed. The enemies are still pretty weak compared to Elliewood and Hector, so they don't really have any problems on this map until it's time to fight Uhai, who has a dangerous killing edge and is hard to hit with him being in a forest. He drops an Orion's Bolt, which is nice for selling, and Elliewood actually did pretty well against him and killed him with a crit after two rounds of combat. I do decide to accept 19x because there is a goddess icon in that map that I can either use or sell. So chapter 19x is the only guide in chapter I go to other than 31x battle preparations, and that is simply because for all the others I just didn't meet the requirements to go to them. So this chapter turned out to be more trouble than I thought it would be. I was thinking it would be a breeze and I could just get a nice sword reaver and goddess icon and be in and out real quick and easy. However, it takes me too long to get to the village so then I couldn't make my way to the boss and kill him before Kishina leaves. The boss is also really dodgy and hard to kill while Kishina is around since he is not being slowed down by either of his tomes. So to beat this map, I just had to wait out all of the enemies and kill them all first before fighting the boss and it sucks that those four morphs that surround Kishina start to move. Then when Kishina leaves, the two snipers were especially hard to kill and they really came close to killing Elliewood. Luckily there were two forts side by side along with the mountains that I could move around and attack from to keep Elliewood and Hector safe. The boss attacks with his bolting and luckily he didn't get any hits with it and then his L fire slows him down so that Elliewood can double and two round him and then I can end the map. I still think doing this chapter was worth it even though I used up a couple hand axes and vulnerabilities. In chapter 20 I am forced to bring Lynn into this map so I will have to keep her safe somehow but it turned out to be not too much of a problem. In the beginning of this map 
there is a narrow passageway that gets really clogged up with enemies and makes it hard to take them down. Thankfully, Hector and Eliwood got lots of crits, which helps out a lot. And something pretty funny happens when I'm fighting the mid boss of this map. So I had him at a point where I could kill him and he drops an elixir. So I did some clever trading and inventory management so that I could get the elixir and I had it planned out that Hector would attack him and weaken him enough for Eliwood then to get the kill and he would have room in his inventory for the elixir. But then Hector decides to crit and then Hector's inventory was full so I had to drop a full used iron sword so that I could keep the elixir. But stuff like that happens sometimes I guess. Then there are Pegasus Knight reinforcements that will most definitely kill Lin if I were to let them. So I rescue Lin with Hector and just wait out the enemies coming at me until it's safe to drop Lin and move forward. I plan to get to the boss and end this map before I get caught up in all the reinforcements in this map but I was too slow so I just had to put Eliwood and Hector in some forest tiles and wait out all the enemies. I also thought that maybe Legault or one of the other thieves would open up the door in front of the boss but none of them do. There is a cracked wall though that opens up a path to the boss and the fighters in this map really love to tear down those walls. I didn't do too well with my inventory management in this map and I was getting really worried that I would run out of weapons and not be able to beat the map but the reinforcements eventually stopped and I carefully took out the other enemies on my way to the boss. Then luckily I saved a few uses on the wolf bale and it only took Hector two hits from it to kill the boss and then I could end the map. Now on to chapter 21. I did deploy Merlinus so that I could buy and send him some weapons. I even bought a few iron lances and javelins in preparation for Eliwood's promotion. I traded to get Ninian's elixir and then I just let her get killed. I wanted to get to the vendor that sells vulneraries before Merlinus died but I couldn't make it so hopefully I can get through the next couple of chapters without much healing items. My strategy for this map was to rush and kill Oleg as fast as possible to end the map using as little weapon uses as possible and it worked out quite Quite well. I made it to Oleg and killed him without even needing to heal at all. Hector got a really lucky crit on Oleg to make it easy for Eliwood then to finish the job. Many of the enemies in this map had weak poison weapons that barely did any damage if any and I ended the map quick enough so that the poison couldn't do much to me either. Next is chapter 22. This is another easy defend map. There is a nice little two tile wide choke point that Hector and Eliwood can stand in and then I just have their inventory swapped so that they don't counter any enemies but if there would have ever been a need to attack any enemies I could have. Isadora also joins here with some good weapons and an angelic rope so I move her back to safety with Lin who was forced deployed on this map. First we get to watch green units do what they do best which is dying and eventually all the green units will be gone including Wrath and his squad. Then the enemies that are able to attack Eliwood and Hector can't really do much and it is just a matter of waiting out all 11 turns before this map is over. Like I said earlier I did have axes on Eliwood Hollywood and swords on Hector just in case there would happen to be an enemy that I needed to kill. I could just trade weapons between the two of them, but nothing like that came up, so cool. Another chapter down. During battle preps for chapter 23, I went ahead and gave the angelic robe to Eliwood. I think he'll get the most use out of it since he'll promote soon, and he'll be seeing a lot of combat in the near future. So the important thing in this chapter is to get some of the hidden treasures. I want the ocean seal, the body ring, the light brand, and the hero crest, and I figured I might as well get the Eclipse Tome as well, and that's all of them. The Body Ring I'll give to Eliwood so that he doesn't get slowed down by some of the heavier swords and eventually lances. The Light Brand I'll probably use and the rest of the stuff I'll sell for lots of money because boy do I need it. I also do something I normally wouldn't do, which is I recruit Hawkeye because I really want his killer axe for Hector. The strategy here for this map though is to let Pent clear out as much of the map as possible. He does have a chance of dying and it happened to me on my first attempt on this map but there are some enemies that attack Eliwood and Hector including one of the bosses and that is Paul the one with the killer axe. The mages are scary and I have to heal once but I am able to take care of the enemies. I let Eliwood fight Paul and it was a little scary because Eliwood did have a slight chance of dying especially with how many rounds of combat the two of them went through but it did work out and Paul went down. I then started working on finding the treasures while Pent finishes up his side of the map. Once I have all the treasures I start to scout out the remaining enemies. I pull the second boss and then Pent comes in to try and get the kill. I was a little worried he might die but it worked out in the end and it was just a matter of finding the last couple of enemies so that I could end the map and Hector could not be any more right about them not doing much. During battle preps for chapter 24 I gave Eliwood the Aphos drop since he promotes soon and will get the most use out of them I think. And this was the toughest chapter so far and because I am not using Lin I am basically forced into the Lloyd version of this map and Lloyd is one of the strongest bosses 
bosses in the entire game. The other enemies on this map aren't really all that strong though, except there are a few promoted enemies. I was really worried about this chapter going into this run. The win condition on this map is just to defeat the boss, and Lloyd starts out pretty close and can be pulled pretty early. However, he is really strong, and there's no way that I could fight both him and a bunch of other enemies at the same time. So my strategy here was to first get Elliewood and Hector into the two forest tiles up by the arena. From there, I will take out the wyverns, and then I give all of Elliewood's swords to Hector and leave Hector with just a hand axe. This way, most enemies will try to fight Elliewood and he won't counter or kill them. There are a lot of reinforcements in this map that I don't want to deal with, so I will intentionally leave enemies alive so that they hit the enemy cap, and then a lot of the reinforcements then just won't show up. Wallace is also on this map and he helps out a little bit. He survived for quite a few turns, kills some enemies, and keeps them company. The last of the reinforcements would arrive on turn 11, so I hold out till then, and then after that, I start to fight back and kill all the enemies surrounding me. Then I start working my way towards the armories and shops, and there is a bishop with a purge tome in my way, as well as a hero and a couple mercenaries. But once that's all taken care of, I want a sword reaver for Hector so that he would have a good chance of fighting Lloyd, and I stock up on as many vulneraries as I can as well, and use some to heal up because it's really annoying that there are four forts in this map, but all of them are in Lloyd's attack range. Then it's finally time to make my way to Lloyd. I want to set up Elliewood and Hector in the two forts near the top of the map. Lloyd prefers to attack from two range with his light brand, and it can do quite a bit of damage to Hector if he hits. I try to manipulate Lloyd into attacking from a tile beside one of the forts so that either Hector or Elliewood could attack him safely then from a fort. It would have been nice if Hector had more chances to attack, but Elliewood ended up doing most of the work. I had to be pretty risky at times, but with a little luck, I was able to take down Lloyd and end this map. On to chapter 25. This was a very long chapter. There are quite a few aggressive enemies at the start of this map, and I work my way south and then west because the pirates are a small fry and I might as well take them out first. This is a pretty odd Hector mode exclusive map. There are a lot of enemies and lots of reinforcements, but they are all rather weak and it has a unique chapter goal, which is to like claim each of the three castles. All I need to do is have Hector or Elliewood end their turn on each castle's gates just once and then it counts and I can move them off. So I start with the one with the warrior and pirates. Farina also comes in on this chapter and kills a few enemies with her killer lance before she gets killed herself. The warrior has a lot of attack, but he had a 0% chance of hitting Elliewood and I'm sure his hit chance for Hector had to have been very low as well. Elliewood got a few hits on him and then Hector killed him with a crit. There are still quite a few enemies coming at me. So while I take them out, I go ahead and claim the first castle and I make use of the gates to heal up. Then I pull the ball and he is actually pretty strong. Hector will have to do most of the work to take him down, but Elliewood can help out as well. Then I set up in some forest tiles and prepare to take out a ton of cavalier reinforcements. I trade away Elliewood's swords so that they all attack Hector, and Hector will one round most of them and get through them much quicker. Then I can go ahead and claim the second castle and take out the archers on the ballista. The bishop on the third castle has a purge tome, so I bait that out and use the forts to heal up Elliewood. Now as soon as I step over this bridge, there will be a ton of monk reinforcements. Elliewood has much higher resistance than Hector, so what I can do is place Elliewood so that only one monk can attack him at two range, and then all of the others will have to go into one range to attack him. So Elliewood can one round all of these guys on enemy phase, and then once the reinforcements end, I can finally move in to take out that bishop. I do a little bit of shopping here at the end before claiming the final gate to end the map. Next is chapter 26, and Lin is forced to play it on this map. So starting out, I just trade over all of Pence and Louise's inventories over to her because I figure why not? They're worth a lot of gold. Then Hector will be carrying Lin for the entirety of this map. Also, we get a Heaven Seal at the beginning of this map, so Elliewood finally gets to promote. He gets some decent stat bonuses, and he finally will be getting experience and leveling up again. Then I just want to get Hector and Elliewood into the forts up by the castle, but I have to be careful that they are not in Vita's range. I then leave Pent and Louise alone, and once one of them dies, they both leave. Hector will get surrounded by wyverns that can't do anything to him, and Elliewood will fight back and try to get some good level ups. He gets two in this map, and they both were pretty bad, which is disappointing. Since I gave him the Aphra's drops, I thought they'd be better. As a Night Lord, Elliewood gets to use lances, which is great since he can now use javelins. He also gets a horse that gives him Kanto and seven 
move. It's a great promotion for him. My only problem with it is that its speed cap is very low at 24. It's the same as Hector's Great Lord class, which is just very strange. It is also just like a discount paladin because Night Lord does have a two point higher strength cap, but the defense cap is two points lower, move is one point lower, and it doesn't have access to axes. But this is a really easy survive map and it ends automatically after 11 turns when Vita just decides to retreat. And yeah, I guess it did work out, Ellie Wood. Now on to chapter 27. I get the Kenneth version of this map because none of the Hero Crest users got any experience and I didn't plan for this, but I do like this version over the other one, so I'll take it. This chapter will be Ellie Wood's time to shine. I'll be giving him every kill in this map. I have to be careful with this bishop with a purge tome. And first things first, I want to get rid of this general and these knights. So good job, Ellie Wood, getting crits and nice, a good level up and a speed wing. I like that. Okay, now we have wyverns coming in and nice, the snow stopped. Hmm, that is a lot of wyverns. I'll have to move Hector into Ellie Wood's support range. A couple wyverns will go after Hector, but since Ellie Wood is injured, they mostly want to go after him, which is good. And all right, another good level up. I can't really do much until these wyverns are dealt with, but I can move Hector closer so I can trade Ellie Wood some more weapons. I love how those enemies are all gathering on the other side of the wall, thinking they can do something. They really want a piece of Ellie Wood and they'll get a piece soon, I promise. The thieves are starting to get to the treasure, but that's good because if I can kill them fast enough, they'll drop it for me. So let's try and catch up to them. I'm still leaving Ellie Wood at low HP for now because most enemies will prioritize attacking him over Hector and Ellie Wood can get some good enemy phases out of it. And darn, the snow came back and Harkin is here too. I hope I have enough weapons to beat this map. Where are those thieves running to? I guess there is a door down there attracting them. I have to be careful of Harkin's range here. Okay, again, I normally wouldn't do this, but I do want to recruit Harkin here. Not only do I just not want to fight and kill him, but I really, really want his brave sword. Okay, wow, those thieves really do want to open that door, but they can't because it's being blocked by an archer and a mage. Interesting. This means I actually have a chance of getting the items they drop. That's pretty cool. Although the one that has the talisman has something else that he'll be dropping, so that sucks. I really wanted that talisman. Meanwhile, I've just been being careful with defeating these remaining enemies, and Elliewood has been getting more good level ups. I am gonna have to slow down here to get the Kenneth to use up all of his purge tome uses. And would you look at that? Elliewood got S rank and lances, which is definitely not something you see every day. But for this run, I think S rank and lances would be for the best. Okay, now that Kenneth has no purge uses left, let's pull this sword master. And boy, he's pretty fast. I think I'll just enemy phase him. Okay, good. And since we're here, we might as well get rid of Kenneth. And wow, he is also a little scary. Please hit this, Elliewood. All right, and can we get a good level up? It's okay. He had some good ones earlier. Might as well use the throne to heal up because I do want to kill the rest of the enemies here. No point in wasting the experience for Elliewood. I want as many stats as I can get for the next chapter. And I might as well use the speed wings on Elliewood because next chapter is going to be tough. And I'll need Elliewood to get me through it. I don't see Hector doing much. Okay, I did not see that coming. Now the thieves are going to try and run away. I think I can catch up to them. Oh, what's up? They just came running back to me. Cool. Oh, I see where they want to escape to. I think I can catch up to them and there we go. I got a nice guiding ring and a blue gem for my troubles. Now Hector can seize to end this map. During battle preps for chapter 28, I gave that goddess icon I got from way back in 19x to Elliewood because I don't think I'll ever need to sell it and an extra two points of avoid and crit avoid would never hurt. This is one of the two chapters that I was most worried about for the entire game. I have to protect Zephiel for 15 turns. The problem is that he is so far away from Elliewood and Hector's starting positions. Also, what Jafar does and how long he survives is completely dependent on RNG. That was a very good crit by Elliewood to kill that hero and a good level up too. That is also good that Jafar crits and kills that fighter on the first strike because I think that guy has a sword reaver and can easily get a hit on Jafar, which increases the chances of Jafar running away from Zephiel's room to heal, which is bad because we want Jafar to stay close to Zephiel's room so he attracts the enemies away from Zephiel. Now here, I'm gonna have to use Elliewood to open this door and then thanks to Kanto, I can move him up a little bit with Hector behind him and hopefully Elliewood 
Wood will kill a lot of enemies here on enemy phase. Also, Jafar is getting hurt. He's probably going to, yep, he's running away to heal. It's okay, all is not lost yet. Let's just continue. We still have time, but we do need to get a move on. So what I'll do here is rescue Hector and just book it to Zephyr. And oh, there just went an enemy towards Zephyr. But what will Jafar do? He's moving down and, oh, I think that could work. Those enemies should all go after Jafar. So hopefully there aren't any more enemies getting closer to Zephyr but all Ellie Wood can do is just move forward. I also want to be careful not to get in Ursula's bolting range. Okay, there's a fighter and Zephyr gets the crit. Wow, I think that's maybe like a sign that I could win this. That first fighter that reaches Zephyr isn't all that harmful though. It's the second one that could reach him that has a sword reaver and I have to get to that guy first. Okay, lots of enemies going after Jafar. That's both good and bad. There's also a sniper coming in. Jafar is definitely going to run up and heal and he does just like I thought. Okay, I'm going to drop Hector here. Elliewood's definitely going to be doing some fighting next turn, so I have to drop Hector this turn. I do have some axes on him so he can fight back if he needs to. Okay, now, I can see a couple enemies going towards Zephyr. I can't count on Jafar to help out anymore, but he did a really good job up to this point. But now Elliewood's ready to take over and save Zephyr. And oh boy, that sniper looks like he's in range of Zephyr. That is very, very bad. What's he gonna do? Elliewood's doing good clearing out some of the enemies. Oh, Oh no, the sniper's gonna attack Zephyr, but he doesn't one round him. Oh wow, Zephyr survives. That's incredible. Zephyr does have an elixir and he will run away to heal if he's at less than 50% HP and he does, but I can't get Elliewood there to kill the sniper this turn. I'll just have to kill the hero and hope there aren't any more enemies hiding in the dark that I can attack Zephyr because as long as it's just the sniper, Zephyr can survive for as long as his elixir lasts. It's actually really good that Jafar has survived for this long because he is keeping the attention of a lot of enemies. Zephyr does survive for another turn and now I can kill the sniper so that's really good. Okay we have some mages, knights, and generals coming in and Jafar didn't do anything. He must have broke his weapon. Okay now I think what I'll do here is use Elliewood to kill the enemies and have Hector rescue Zephyr. Jafar is still alive. That's cool. And there's another sniper. Luckily Hector has cap defense and Elliewood can just take care of that sniper and so far so good. Oh boy, Jafar is really hanging on there. He's out of elixirs too, it looks like. Okay, I am anticipating Ursula moving in and attacking with her bolting here. I know she eventually starts to move towards the end here, but I'm thinking that maybe I have a chance at killing these thieves and getting the Brave Lance and the boots. These generals are pretty tanky though and they're in my way. I guess that won't work. And there goes Jafar and Nino too back to back. Jafar did really good though. I'm proud of him. And okay, a lot of enemies are going to be coming in here. I'll just have to retreat. We made it really far. There's only two turns left. I think I'll have to give Zephyr over to Elliewood because I'm worried about Ursula possibly doubling Hector with her bolting while he's got Zephyr. Okay, last turn now and still no sign of Ursula. Oh, there she is and she misses cool okay just have to wait out all of the other enemies and there are the lights we did it that is a huge relief that i could beat this map Next is chapter 29, and this was the second of the two maps that I was most worried about for the entire game. The enemies here are almost all magic users that will kill Hector pretty easily if they get the chance, so I needed to figure out a way to get them to ignore Hector, and I could do that by simply equipping Hector with a hand axe, and then I actually don't have any javelins for Elliewood. I'm completely out. So the enemies really like to attack units that can't counter them, so they end up ignoring Hector and attacking Elliewood since he can't counter. Then I can have Elliewood run around and kill like one enemy each turn. It was a long and slow process, but it got the job done. The only problems were the enemies with siege tomes and status saves, but I was able to kill them before anything bad happened. There was also one time that Hector got attacked and hit by a shaman because the shaman couldn't attack Elliewood at two range. So since he would be countered no matter who he went after, he'd rather go after Hector since that's who would take more damage. Then since Hector was injured, that made makes him an even higher priority for enemies to attack. But at that point, there were barely enemies left in the area, and I just used a couple vulneraries to heal Hector up. 
Then there's a bishop with a purge tome that kept hitting Hector, making me use up elixirs to heal him. And I finally get the bishop close enough for Eliwood to run up and get rid of him. I'm just being careful not to trigger any of the reinforcement zones. But then I ran out of healing and Eliwood was really low on HP, so I had no choice but to trigger one reinforcement zone that spawns Valkyries because I needed to get Eliwood into those forts near the top right of the map. Luckily, Eliwood has been leveling up great, and with his current stats, he could handle his own against the Valkyries even without Hector's support bonuses. Hector was left behind and he had to survive against two shamans and thankfully he did good. There were five Valkyries that surrounded Eliwood and attacked him at two range and that forced all the rest to go into one range to attack him and then he could just counter and kill them and then once the reinforcement stopped, Eliwood could run around to finish off the rest at one range. Then I just had to be careful with pulling some other enemies in the area. I also wanted to get the one druid by the boss to waste its sleep staff and I figured I might as well get the bishops to waste their purge tomes. The druids also have eclipse tomes and I was able to slowly pull them closer to me and they also got separated which is good because I did not want to try and fighting them both at once. I took them and the heroes down one by one just to be extra careful because Eliwood was getting amazing level ups and I did not want to have to reset. I also just ran back to the forts anytime I needed healing. There was then one more challenge to tackle in this map which is the Valkyries on the far left side of the map. One has a berserk staff and one has a sleep staff. I kept Hector far away and just let Eliwood deal with them since their chances of hitting him were pretty low, probably around 20% with their staves. He dodged all of the berserk uses and got hit by the final sleep use, but by that time there wasn't much they could do to him. And when he finally woke up, he killed the rest of them and I was able to bring Hector over and do some shopping. Then I was prepared to trigger the last reinforcement zone and to my surprise, no one showed up. I'm thinking that there must be a turn limit and since I was so many turns into this map no more reinforcements will come in. I guess I could have just abused that at the start of the map by just spamming and turn until turn 100 or so and then maybe I wouldn't have had to worry about any of the reinforcement zones. So I finished up the remaining enemies and even the boss was no match for Eliwood and it was a huge relief that I could beat this scary map and Eliwood actually hits level 20 during this map so not counting the stat boosters I gave him he ended up with minus one HP, average strength, plus plus one skill, minus one speed, but that one's hard to tell since he capped it, plus three luck, plus one defense, and plus three resistance. So he turned out pretty all right. And then at the end, Hector finally promotes and he has a lot of catching up to do. Chapter 30 is an easy chapter and a much needed break from the last two. I just try to give as much experience to Hector as I can, and he gets a couple good level ups. I also try to work on increasing his sword rank, but I do want him to get S rank and axes over swords. Hector did pretty well against the boss, but Eliwood was ready to jump in if he needed to. And while the rest of this map plays out, I'll talk about Hector's Great Lord class. His promotion gains are pretty good. He gets them where he needs them most, like skill, speed, and resistance. He gets access to swords, and his move stays at 5, which is not great. His stat caps are not bad, but not great either. Just like Eliwood is a discount paladin, Hector is basically a discount general. Great Lord actually is classified as an armored class, meaning it's weak to hammers, and armor slayers. Great Lord does have a one point higher strength cap, but it sacrifices three less skill, one less defense, and five less resistance. And also the general's lance and axe weapon combo is just better than Hector's axe and sword combo. And it's cool that in FE6, Eliwood is a paladin and Hector is a general if you were to use them in the trial maps. Next is chapter 31, and this is another easy chapter. It's a simple defend map. The bad thing is that Lin is forced to play so I need to have Eliwood rescue her for the entire chapter. For the first couple of turns, we get to watch green units just get absolutely slaughtered. Then I put Hector on the throne and I just try to kill as many enemies with Hector as I can, trying to give him as much experience as possible. He got a couple decent level ups and a couple bad ones. There are a lot of reinforcements in this map and it hits the enemy cap quite a few times. The enemies that ended up surrounding and attacking Eliwood couldn't do much to him and I had a few vulneraries for him so he would be fine. There is a druid with a berserk staff, but luckily he didn't move. I think he would have only moved
moved if I got into a staff range. I didn't even bother trying to get any treasures from the thieves. I probably had no chance of getting them. And for one final time, we'll make the meme. There we go. And in come more green units for the slaughter. There's not much to say about chapter 31x. I just bought a lot of weapons, elixirs, and a couple pure waters. I definitely went way overkill with how much stuff I bought, but I had plenty of money so I might as well use it. Next we have chapter 32, victory or death. This map was a long and slow grind. There are tons of enemies and reinforcements, but I do have a plan for how I will deal with them all. I didn't bring any healing items. I brought two iron weapons, two throwing weapons and one killer weapon on both Elliewood and Hector. I did fear that there is a chance of running out of weapons and I want to give most of the kills to Hector and he only reaches level 19 by the end of this map. I just couldn't quite get him to 20. He leveled up fine, just not great. I still think Elliewood is the better combat unit, but to ensure that I don't run out of weapons during this map, my plan was to try to keep the enemy number capped out so that there would be many turns where the reinforcements just don't come in because because there are already too many enemies on the map. It's a solid strategy. I've done it a few other times so far in this run. Nils is also here and he lasted quite a long time before he died. At one point he had me thinking that he might survive the entire map. But then some wyverns came in to take him out. So the reinforcements for this map continue until turn 35. So I just kept Elliewood and Hector in and around those two forts closest to the starting area and had them deal with all of the aggressive enemies, trying to give as many of the kills to Hector. Once turn 35 rolled around and I knew for sure the turn-based reinforcements have stopped, I went around the map to clear up as many of the remaining enemies as I could, trying to get Hector to level 20. I was a little worried about getting berserked by the bishop, but luckily Elliewood dodged them all. There are a couple siege tomes and ballista that slow me down as well. The fight with Limstella could have gone better. Hector really didn't want to crit for some reason, but with some help from Elliewood, Hector finally got the boss kill. There were a few enemies still on the map, but they were so far away and they wouldn't have given Hector enough experience to hit level 20 anyway, so I just went ahead and ended the map. And yes, Hector, it did feel like it would go on forever. For the final chapter, I will go ahead and give you a look at Hector and Elliewood's stat screens. Hector will be bringing in a Tomahawk, Armads, and two Elixirs. He has one empty slot for the Basilicos. Hector will hit level 20 during this map, and when he does, he is at minus one HP, minus four strength, plus one skill, minus two speed, minus seven luck, minus one defense, and average resistance. So actually a pretty bad Hector, but Elliewood makes up for his weaknesses pretty well. I think they made a great team in this run. I gave Elliewood a Brave Sword, a Javelin, Durandal, and one Elixir. He has one empty spot for the Rex Hosta. I have nine uses of Elixirs between the two of them, and I think that will be enough to make it through this map. Elliewood turned out amazing. He definitely put in the most work throughout the run. Then here's everyone that survived to the end, and Lynn and Athos are force deployed for this final chapter. So starting out, we're going to want to move up towards Kenneth's room, and the reason for this this is I want to take out that bolting sage because I feel like if I leave him alone he will probably just target Hector and be annoying in that way. So we'll let Elliewood take care of the sage and the druid and then Hector could come in and finish off Kenneth. I also have Athos just rescue Lynn so that she doesn't die. Then Uhai is gonna catch up and we're just gonna hold up here in Kenneth's room with Athos and Lynn in the back so that they don't get attacked. Now Uhai is one of the strongest morphs in this map but I set it up here so that he goes after Elliewood and then Hector can come in and attack at one range and he gets the crits and Uhai goes down and Hector gets his final level up. Then I'm not going to go after the snipers just yet. I just want to get Elliewood set up to fight Brendan and he gets the crit on the third attack and takes that Basilicos. Now I try to clear these snipers out of here and Elliewood gets a little unlucky and gets dangerously low on HP and will he survive? Okay he's good. Now Ursula is getting pretty close and I do not want her going after Hector so Elliewood get in there and heal up. Hector you back up and take that Basilicos. Ursula coming in here and Elliewood crits and gets 
fifth kill. So what's funny is I did have a couple of failed attempts on this map, but on each attempt, I still had Elliewood versus Ursula, and every time, Elliewood got at least one crit and one rounded her each time. One time, he even got double crits. Elliewood just really hates her or something. Okay now, Lloyd is the scariest morph out of what is left, and what's even scarier is that him and Linus actually give support bonuses to each other from their A support. So we're going to put Hector out in front with Armads since it gives him plus five defense. He does take quite a beating this turn, but he'll be okay. Now Elliewood can safely throw a Javelin at Lloyd and Hector will have to heal. Now what will the enemies do? Hector gets the crit on Darren, okay. Lloyd's up next. Hector takes a crit and kills Lloyd on the counter. Okay, Hector just survived now. And another crit from Hector, oh he is mad now. Now let's just finish off Darren here, get that Rex Hosta, trade it over to Elliewood, and let's try to take down Linus now. Oh, what's happening, Hector? Hector, be careful. Hector, please. Okay, we're all right. We are doing just fine. Elliewood just finish off Linus, and he does it in style with the unnecessary critical. Okay, so now only Germ is left. He is one of the weakest morphs, and there is a reason I saved him for last. We're gonna move Athos out and heal up Hector. Then we're moving right up next to Nurgle's door. We're gonna knock and let him know we're here. He's gonna say he'll open up when we kill Germ. Okay, that's not a problem. Hector will kill Germ. Nurgle will open the door and Elliewood has been waiting, getting ready to run up and kill the druid right away. That druid has a berserk staff and that is the reason why my first couple attempts at this map failed because Elliewood and Hector would just both get berserked and kill Athos and Lin would have been next. So I would just reset. So I realized if I left Germ alive, I could set up outside Nurgle's room and kill the druid as soon as possible so that I don't get berserked. Once that's taken care of, there are a few more enemies that I should take out. So we can just do that and I guess we'll turn on animations for the rest of the game. Nurgle hits pretty hard and I would like to save my elixir so we'll just put Elliewood next to him and equip the Durandal and let Nurgle attack on enemy phase. Let's get this done Elliewood, you're almost there. Hector can't quite finish the job but I kind of have to attack here and you really need to hit both of these Hector, come on. Okay, now Elliewood this kill is guaranteed and there it is, Nurgle is down. Hector says it's finished but he might be getting a little ahead of himself. There is one more thing to do, we have to kill the fire dragon. So I'll quickly show Hector and Elliewood's final stats. The fire dragon is why I wanted to make sure I had plenty of healing because it two shots both Elliewood and Hector and I'll just have to let it attack Elliewood on enemy phase for a few turns before its HP gets low enough for me to finish it off. Elliewood actually does more damage to it than Hector because of the plus five strength from Durandal and Hector had bad luck with getting strength. Okay Elliewood can pretty much guaranteed kill it now but might as well let Hector get some action here for the final fight and Elliewood will get the honor of killing the fire dragon to beat the game. And what a run. It was a lot of fun. FE7 was my first Fire Emblem game and is one of my favorites and I love both Elliewood and Hector. They are awesome. And with all that said, thank you for watching and if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe and have a great rest of your day.